Hey, hey, you all listen. Happy Tuesday. This is recap of Mary to Medicine. And I'm so glad. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so glad that next week is reunion part three because I'm over and I'm done. But I am looking forward to seeing Apollo. Yes, I am. I'm looking forward to seeing Apollo, okay? Apollo come up there and telling his truth, his hurt, and his pain. Now, is he a whole hot mess? Of course he is. Of course he is. But he coming up there telling his truth. He said he did five years. He did five years and Phaedra threw him to the trash. Now, what happened to for better or worse? What happened to that? Nobody believes in that no more. Everybody talk the junk. They talk the lies. They full of it. What happened to for better or worse? And you know what? I like Phaedra, but I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. You can't tell me that you got a whole husband in your house. He's buying BMWs, Rolls Royce, helping pay your mortgage, and you don't know where this money is coming from? He got a business? If business is that good, he needs to teach other people how to do that business. Phaedra knew that whole time, and let's keep it clear, y'all. I like Phaedra, but Phaedra knew that whole time. And I think Apollo was a real G. He took it for the family. And when he was there, Phaedra left him near the rot. Yeah, she did. She left him near the rot. I don't know. She didn't. She probably didn't put no money on his books. So here comes this other chick. She said, I got you, Apollo. She probably was watching him the whole time. Listen, these ladies that are on the reality shows with their husbands, trust me. There's some chick watching that screen waiting for one misstep to happen between you and your man and they're going to be up in their DMs. They're going to be up in their DMs. There are chicks out there that want your life. Listen, there are people watching their neighbors and want their life. They see you and your husband. Oh my God, they always look so happy. Oh, my God, it snowed. He was out there cleaning off her car. Oh, my God, he took her car to get washed. They be watching you. And instead of them praying, oh, God, let me get a man that's going to love me like that, they think that your man is supposed to be with them. Ask, ask uh, 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 Dr. Simone. Tammy wanted her life. Tammy wanted her man. You got to be careful. Be on the lookout. These people be wanting your life. So Apollo coming to speak. Mm -hmm. Apollo coming in here. He coming to speak and he about to tell his truth. But Phaedra knew what he was doing. But Phaedra lucky she didn't have to spend a day behind bars unlike Teresa Judice from the Real Housewives of New York. But we're going to carry on. The reunion part two was the reunion part two. And Dr. J uh, Jackie was speaking to uh, Quad. Dr. Jackie, she's so arrogant. Her nose is all the way up to the sky. I, I mean, who raised Dr. Jackie? I love to see, you know, know who her parents were, what they were like. Because Dr. Jackie, she's arrogant. She got the nerve when they was when Dr. Kim was talking. She got the nerve to say, oh, he doesn't get it, this, that, that. He doesn't get it, girl. You didn't even really explain to us on that reunion what you said when you was on Dr. Heavenly's podcast and you weren't about who leaked it out versus the fact that you said it in the first place. Quad, we, we wasn't in a good place. And, and you know, you don't call anybody back. You don't text anybody. So we thought it was you. You don't blame your, your girlfriend that you was on her podcast with? You don't blame yourself for saying those words out your mouth? You want to know who leaked it again? Dr. Jackie's a piece of work. Quad says she bad with texting, bad with making phone calls. She's just a bad friend. I like Quad too, but I'm going to need you to tell the truth, Quad. Just say, I'm that girl. When we working, I'm all in. When I'm not working, deuces. I'll see you next time they say we got to film again. 
Just tell the truth so the girls know what to expect. Not going to hang with y'all. I'm not going to eat with y'all. I'm not coming to hang out with you and your kids. I'm not coming to the birthday party unless the cameras are rolling. Tell the truth. But at the end of the day, how much does Quad have in common with those ladies? They're all married. She's not. They got husbands. She don't have one. They got kids. She don't have any. And I'm not throwing shade. I'm trying to tell you, what do they have in common? Yeah, I'm nothing. She's a single lady living her best life, traveling and doing whatever. What is she going to do? She going to hang out with Dr. Simone. Is Dr. Simone C suing her? I mean, come on. You heard Dr. Simone said, I love Toya. Her husband be cooking for me. It's the couples hanging out together. I don't know, but they spoke and hugged it out. And then she went into Dr. Simone's room and, and, and she and she hugged it out and, and had a conversation with Dr. Simone. I'm about to board everybody in a minute. Mm-hmm. She hugged it out. Said they said they worked it out. And they said that Quad has taken accountability. And I give it to Toya. I like Toya. She messy, but I like Toya. I give it to Toya. Toya said, you know what, Quad? You know what, Quad? I'm going to give you that. You trying to work it out with the people? Cool. After all Quad did to Toya, and you know what? The, um, the ladies from the Real Housewives of Potomac, they need to be watching this reunion. Because Toya, that's how you do it, Toya. Even though Quad did all that stuff to you, Talked about your husband, your this, your dad, whatever. You still looked at Quad in real time at that reunion and told her, you know what? Thanks for doing that. It's kind of showing you care about us. Come on, Toy. They need to give you a raise. Toy is cute. Beautiful skin. I like Toya. And you know what? She keep it real. She said, listen, my husband know what he signed up for. So I'm going to pull back. Because she right. Dr. Eugene know what he signed up for. He love him some toy. And I ain't mad at him for loving his woman. I'm not mad. Love your wife. That's right. And you know what? Toy love your husband. Come on. She grown. She grown. She bigger. She, she, she better than Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone. She grown, grown. That was some nice stuff to do. Sweet tea. The way that sweet tea is being treated is deplorable. Dr. Heavenly ought to be ashamed of herself. I, I mean, and then she wants to try to gaslight us, talking about she in therapy. Well, honey, it's not working. You need to do it day, night, night, day, lunchtime. Soon as you finish cleaning a patient's teeth, you need to go in there, do some Zoom meeting with a therapist. Because you got a long way to go. For her to sit there and say, Dr. Henry sat there and said that um, I um, now I'm close to my sister because of what um, because of what Sweet Tea said. Yeah, she's a straight bully. But you know what? Uh, 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 Andy's allowing it. It's like anything for a show. She's a straight bully. But I will tell this, I was shocked when Dr. Jackie, but I think it's only because of the trouble she got into with the words she said about the black woman in the pregnancy and all of that. She actually kind of stuck up for Sweet Tea a little bit. Say, no, it takes years to diagnose endometriosis, this, that, that, and the other. Yes, Dr. Heavenly is gutter low. She's a gutter snipe. She's gutter low. But Dr. Jackie tried to take up for sweet tea a little bit and said it takes a long time to diagnose or whatever. But Dr. Uh, uh, Heavenly is a mess. And listen, listen, I don't know if y'all saw it, but um, uh, Mariah, Mariah said that Dr. Damon straight came to her and said, don't show the receipts. Why would my husband need to go to anybody and ask them not to show the receipts. So the conclusion is that you cheated. Listen, I'm not, I 
was never top of the class. I was never head of the class. No, I was not. I was in the graduating number. I wasn't even in the top 10, but I graduated. But if you put clear pieces in front of me, I could put the puzzle together. Why would Dr. Damon need to say to Mariah, please don't show the receipts? Because you cheated. And so you got two doctors in their household. You got, come on now, Emmanuel, one and one equals two. That's a point blank in the period. You got two doctors in the building. You got Dr. Heavenly and you got her husband, Dr. Damon. He has some type of, I guess, digestion or whatever problem where there's no other milk he can drink with his cereal. And, but he still likes his cereal and he uses Infamil that you have to mix with water so that he can eat cereal? It's the lies, the lies, the lies for me. That don't even make sense to me. If I was allergic to almond milk, buttermilk, cow milk, lactate, free milk, if none of those work for me and my digestive system, come on, Miss G. That's the first I heard of that. The first ever. If, if nothing else worked for me, come on, coconut milk, almond milk, oat milk, soy milk. He needs infamil to the point where he's drinking that much cereal, that eating that much cereal, that you got two cans in your cabinet. Two. What grown people eat that much cereal? You got two cans of Infamil, and how did he discover? Come on, I would just stop eating cereal. That's what I'm trying to get at. I would just stop eating it. This ain't for me, or I would eat it dry. So, so, so. You need that much milk that you got two cans of Infamil in your cabinet. That every time he wants some cereal, he go mix up that Infamil, take two scoops and add the water, whatever he does, so he can eat cereal. Sounds like somebody got a baby. I mean, it's the lies for me. I can't deal with it. That's Dr. Heavenly for you. So then they talked about sweet tea and her clothes and fake designer clothes. It was just stupid. Then Kwa jumps in talking about I got two eyes and this and that. Well, Quad, I like Quad too. But were your eyes not working when you chose that outfit for the reunion? Because I don't care how much it costs. It didn't seem to fit in. You want to talk about sweet teas not fitting in? That outfit didn't seem to fit in for the reunion. But you got eyes. But I carry on. It talked about sweet tea. And Dr. Hemley claims, like, you know, um, um, you know, her and her sister are together now. Okay. Well, you know what? You should have brought your sister to the reunion. Y'all good now? And it's all that. Bring your sister to the reunion. So they punked Dr. G. Yeah, all the men was together. And I'm like, no, Dr. G, pump your chest up. They punked Dr. G. Dr. Damon was there talking about, oh, so do you think I cheat? Do you think I cheat? Curtis was like, it's a simple question. Cecil was like, it's a simple question. It's so funny how all the cheaters our alleged cheaters was punking Dr. G to confirm that Dr. Damon is not a cheater. Can I tell you this right now? If I know I didn't cheat and someone's accusing me of a cheater, of being a cheater, 
Y'all go ahead and want to talk that talk. I ain't got whatever. What do I care? I know the truth. My people know the truth. And that's good enough for me. Because you're never going to convince somebody to think something different than that what they want to think. They pumped Dr. G. And Dr. G finally said, no, I don't think you're a cheater. And Dr. Damon dapping them up. Dude, you, you're just forced them to say that. And Curtis, I'm going to need you to go back to the DR. Why are you here? We don't need you. Why are you here? And you want to give tips and you want to use your words and talk. Why are you here? Matter of fact, you can go and take your wife with you this time. Both of you go to the DR. Because she's sitting there talking about Dr. Kima. Talking about he don't get it and she don't get it either. Talking about the pot calling the kettle black. I cannot. When Sweet Tea asked Dr. Heavenly why she talked about the diagnosis, Sweet Tea, uh, Dr. Heavenly told her, you must want a reaction out of me. Girl, is that easy? Again, therapy's not working, but that's just, you know. They try to punk Dr. Alicia. Listen, I understood with Dr. Kima, Kema, y'all know what I'm talking about, what's saying. We could do tomatoes, tomatoes, whatever, and mix up the words. But at the end of the day, anybody that has a mate, y'all train each other. And that's simple. That It's facts. It's facts. Y'all train each other. So y'all all emotional that this man used the word train. Two for, tools for life, I appreciate you. Yo, 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 emotional about the man who used the word train. We train each other. Honey, pick up your clothes. Put your shoes over here. You want coffee? You, you want the same? You want your sugar and cream in it? Who hasn't gotten up in the morning and, and, and made their mate's favorite drink? Because you know they drink it every morning and you just have it ready. And just because nobody gives you a notebook with steps one through 10 to say what they like, it's training. Come on, Special K. Marriage is on the job training. We don't understand him. Um, Dr. Um, Eugene, you should understand because Toya got you trained. You know you better back her up. Anything she wants, you just do it blindly. Blindly. She wanted that house with the two-story closet. You didn't care how many loans you had to take out to get the in-ground pool and all of that. And 365 days later, you're somewhere else renting. Yeah, you trained, Dr. Eugene. You trained to stay in debt. Sometime a man got to buck up. And tell the one he loved, baby, we ain't doing that. No. No, we're going to go get this house over here because that's the one we can afford. You want to still drive your BMW? You want to still go to the movies? You want to still go on vacation? Then we got to do this right here. We can't go over there. We all get trained. And, and, and indirectly, let's tell the truth here. If your man seems to not catch on to the training, that's when you have a dissolution of that relationship. That's when somebody in that relationship is not happy, they're not mad. Now, I ain't going to take this into the night train. But will you get with somebody and two adults get together and do adult things? Y'all train each other. I like this. You like that. Move this way. I'm going to move that way. It's training, people. Let's stop it. So they leave Dr. Kima, Kema alone. He used a word that triggered a lot of people, train. But at the end of the day, that's what happens. I'm going to move on. Because they try to come for Dr. Alicia. And I sat up in my bed. I was like, girl, stand your ground. Stand your ground. She cute too. All of them, beautiful. 
They they had the little backtrack of the kids moment. I like Doc. I like uh 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 Doctor Henry's daughter, Alora. Always been a little doll face. Always. TV talks and movies. Come on now. I I I appreciate you. I was roaming the streets last night and you had my back. I appreciate you. I had to go though. He was just talking too much or too long. But I saw you have my back out there and I appreciate that. Thank you. He don't want to answer no real questions though. And TV talks and movies, I don't know if you knew and I don't think he realized it when he stood up. He had that Glock in his pocket. So he talking all this mess in these streets, but I feel like he a little scared too. You in your house, you in your house and you got to stay uh, uh, locked and loaded up in your house. But let me carry on because don't everybody don't know what I'm talking about. So I talked about the, Dr. Damon and the FML and then the men. Curtis said he didn't have to fly in from the DR. He was already in Atlanta. But praise the Lord, he's supporting uh, 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 Dr. Jackie for the reunion. They backtrack when, you know, Cecil had a difficult time in the mess. Oh, child. He ready for war. Because he know he running his mouth in these streets. He ready for war. Uh, 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 they asked Dr. G about the 4K and Phage. I think he's nervous. Listen, I will say this. I will say this. Dr. G is looking really good. In comparison to what he looked like when him and Kwa were together, that's so, that tells you they was both stressed out. They was both stressed out in that relationship. So the best thing that could have ever happened to them is for those two to break up. They were stressed. If you look at Dr. G then and you look at him now, he looks more distinguished. He lost weight. He's put together. He's well-dressed. If you go back and look at all the men on the stage, Dr. G rises to the top in terms of his whole overall look. And two Apollo shows up now. And then we got to bump Apollo up to number one. But Dr. G is looking good. And he has matured. Because he said, listen, I don't want to go back to that space. And I don't think we need to bring him back to that space. Him and Kwai were just not good for each other. It's a point blank in a period. That happens sometimes. Two people get together and they was just a mess together. But that doesn't mean that those two individuals can't have a good relationship with someone else. Sweet tea is good for him. He's looking good. He's sounding mature. He's still doing some childish things. But let me did, let me just throw a little news clip out there. For all the men, cover your ears for a minute. Let me talk to the ladies. I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. They could be 90 and they still going to be a mess. We just got to train them the best we can to do at least 90% of what we want. And then we got to let the other 10% go. They messy. They messy from birth to the grave, these men. You just got to get with one where you can deal with the messy. And I could deal with 10% mess and 90% got to be the way I want it. Only dealing with 10% mess. Anything above the 10% threshold, I can't deal. Because I'm messy too. So we can't have too much mess in the same household. So yeah. And so Dr. Kemmer tried to explain himself. But you know what? I will tell, it, tell you this. Most of the men that have come on Married to Medicine, they know how to stand their ground. Anilda's husband, I forgot his name. He knew how to stand his ground. Mariah's husband, he knew how to stand his ground. What's the one that got kicked off? She she did the uh, uh, Dr. Contessa husband. He knew how to stand his ground. Most of the men on Married to Medicine, they know how to stand their ground. Matter of fact, I'm going to go far out and say this. For the most part, all of the men that I see on these reality shows, they don't, they know how to stand their ground. Now, the real housewives of Atlanta, 
they the first ones they they listen they hands down the real housewives of atlanta man all of them knew how to stand their ground they didn't back down for nothing greg anini's husband may he rest in peace apollo uh-huh candy's husband todd eat listen even the stylists okay they they they, they, they didn't they didn't back down Yeah, Greg was the real one, but y'all, I don't talk enough. Let me board this train. Y'all ready? Let me board this train. I need a what in the chat? I need a choo-choo. All aboard, everybody. It is Tuesday night, and it's time to recap Married to Medicine, Reunion Part 2. This is their 10th season, Episode 16. Yeah, Cordell was a hot mess, but he sure didn't know how to stand his ground. He was messy, but he stood his ground. Uh-huh. Yes, he did. I need a what? A choo-choo. So Quad makes amends. Dr. Damon uses Infamil. So now we're going to have an Infamil shortage because Dr. Damon said it's good with cereal. Whatever, y'all. Let me bring the people on in the building. Hey, in my opinion. Hey, Diva. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Hey, Carrie. Hey, the Don. Hey, What's Karina. going on, everybody? What's going on? Oh, smoke in the building. A melon popping. Hey y'all. Hey, your device is saying not connected. Or uh, maybe go out and oh, there you go, there you go. All right, come on, I'm gonna add you in. Hold on now, let me mute you. All right, now come on now. Everybody's in the building. We ready? We ready to get into this, y'all. Listen, y'all can talk about whatever part of the reunion y'all want to talk about. I'm not gonna break this down scene by scene because it was what it was and it is what it was. All right, so whatever part you want to talk about when I come to you, you can talk about it. Um, in my opinion, what did you think about reunion part two? Um, I think it was a hot mess. Um, and I think it was even worse what went on after the reunion. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick to this real quick first. Okay. Because let me tell you something. Oh, it's so many of y'all so pressed that sweet tea on this show for a whole bunch of old women who invited her. How sad are y'all? Because let me tell you something. It's really sad that you want to sit here and call her husband old, but he only two years young, uh, older than you. Now, how stupid is that? So I guess you old too. So Sweet Tea wasn't cracking on you when she called you old. Listen here, I am so over it. And then quiet for you to sit here and say how you had him first and you could talk about him. You didn't want him. You got rid of him. You said he wasn't no good. He was a... Why are you pressed? I, I, I do not get it for the life of me why these people are so pressed that they got to come drag sweet tea. I don't like it. I really don't. And let me tell you something. My kids are lactose intolerant. They don't drink no infamil, okay? They'll drink this almond milk. They'll drink lactate. They won't drink no real milk. But I ain't never heard no infamil feed to no grown man. And I am glad that Toya forgave uh, Quad and, and was the bigger person because at first I thought she was going to be pitied and I was like, Lord, I'm mercy not today. But I do think it's really sad that y'all tried to sit back there and punk Dr. G because all y'all cheaters and then had y'all indiscretions. And we still don't know what you're really doing over there in the DR, uh, Curtis. And if you got any side babies over there, so... Yeah, I'm going to need you to slow your roll. And I wish for Dr. Jackie, you need to do the Beyonce challenge and stay on mute. Stay on mute. Because every time you open your mouth, the only thing I want to hear is what happened in that interview. And where's our real apology? One that you didn't write down and look at the prompter and try to push out some tears when you was ready to push them out. Because it was mighty funny. Those tears stopped real quick. Mm -hmm. Girl, you could have been an actress. that part dr heavenly the lies you tell okay i'm trying to tell you carry you and let me right and let me right tell it let me right tell it um dr heavenly was buying um clothes out of the parking lot when she first <laughs> i mean but why would you be so pressed about where somebody clothes come from what does it matter what does it matter? It was it's a way to make her feel bad, and she was wrong for it. And at 52 years old, you would think you'd be smarter than it. 
that part. That part. And for for the person that you claim you welcome, and you you brought her to the show, you wanted her there, and then that's how you treat the guests that you wanted to come. And to sit there lie and say you didn't talk about that girl on social media, you only you only answered the question and you told him if it was you, you would have you would have found out quicker. Man, stop. I'm gonna need you to stop lying, okay? Because you got several over there on YouTube. And I wish they would have showed that beautiful bean footage like they were showing all the rest of them, but I guess they ain't want to give Dr. Heaven the YouTube page no more clout. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Carry your up. <clears throat> so it, the reunion starts out with Dr. Jack and Quad, right? Mm -hmm. That was so. I don't know how Dr. Jack has any friends. Like, who would be friends with her other than people that um, display her same character, you know, or that snooty aura? Like, since season one, she's like. Even her and Dr. Simone, even that, I don't even know how that works. I couldn't be friends with someone who looks down on me. I, I, don't, I don't understand that, um, even with her and Dr. Simone. But that's, that's really weird. Um, <clears throat> I still don't, under, I, another thing I, I don't understand why, um, what's her name? The one that's married to Eugene, Toya. Mm -hmm. I, I hear what you're saying. Um, um, opinion about you glad that she gave her a chance but she she did not start it she repeated it which was wrong but I heard Eugene say on Carlos King that you know they still uh, they're friends with them because they apologized and they hang out at their houses and I, I don't that whole thing I, I don't understand any of it I'm like you uh, Diva I am like over it I'm so <laughs> glad that this this is almost over. It is all of it. It's just what you say, the foolery of it all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. foolery, uh, uh, all of it, all of them are just for their ages and their occupations. Yes. I guess I'm just, I have this expectation, which I probably shouldn't have, that it's going to be something more, something more in depth, you know, a little bit of mess. You know what I'm saying? We all like the mess. Uh, I do not believe that there's a baby, like there is some side baby. I don't believe that. I believe Mariah and Buffy are um, just as bad as Carlos in Heavenly um, with all their commentary. I don't know if, if Mariah wants to be back on the show. I don't know. I don't know where she, she rose from the ashes from somewhere. <laughs> and now she got so much, you know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? You get on Carlos and you say you got this going on. Okay, well, go over there and do that. Right. Why do you have all this commentary about and this negative commentary? I agree. About, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's unnecessary and it's really diluting like all these people that have all these shows outside of the real show is diluting the show. Mm -hmm. And it's making it not interesting because we know everything is playing out in social media. So we're not surprised about anything that happens on the show. And um, and what else happened? It, it's, it's boring, really. It was really, really. Yeah. Was, hope, hopefully, hopefully um, Apollo will, you know, jazz it up a little bit because Phaedra, of course, was sitting on mute. She doesn't belong on this show. Um, she didn't, she didn't have anything to say. So, so yeah. And I'm still, I'm like you, my opinion, I'm still waiting on Jackie to apologize, to really apologize to everyone for mm -hmm. what she said. Stop blaming, stop blaming heavily, stop blaming, but whoever brought the clip to light, which I think it was people's followers that did it, or it could have been Buffy, but either way, if you didn't say it, it wouldn't have been brought to light. Period. That part. So you, and you never apologize for it. So, um, yeah, I, that's all. That's it. And that's all. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you. Um, Smoke, you're up. Hello, good people. Hello, 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 good people. Um, I actually like part two. I thought it was uh, a little bit softer than part one. 
kind of it was because I felt part one was a bit harsh. Um, well, I think Quad should have just took a note from Jackie's patience. If you want her to be sympathetic and compassionate, you should have slipped her a few Benjamins under her dress and she would have gave you that bedside manner you were looking for and that hug and that empathy. So I just I just find Dr. Jackie very fascinating that she can she can, she's very hot and cold and she can switch it off very easily and i and i wonder like are you truly a compassionate doctor as you say you are that a friend even if she's like doing her best oscar speech crying for the cameras you can't just be like okay i i hear you my girl but then again she does have a point quiet does not know how to be a friend in this circle but then again these ladies kind of were like you know stomping her down when she was going through one of the worst times of her life with her divorce and greg and when even when she admitted that there were things of you know physical Physical, um violence they kind of just like well i'm not sure if that's what that means i'm like they both said that he he threw her to the ground and took the battery out of her car and he said i don't care if i the both of us in a car so what does that what do you mean by that so i found that fascinating i will give toya props i thought that was very big of her to say that you know what at least you see that we care that was a big event honestly i feel like despite how messy the season was and drawn out, I feel like that's the reason why I think we love Married in Medicine because they know how to kind of just address things and kind of just move on or try to move on. Mm -hmm. we, have to wait till, we have to wait to see what season 11 has in store for us. Um, I do believe that um, there is another baby that's possibly a grandchild that Dr. Heavily is hiding. I don't know any grown adult that's eating Infamil with this cereal that just makes no sense to me whatsoever and i'm pretty sure they have other alternatives that work for adults why would you be taking formula from children especially when there's a shortage and they have to lock it up in cases in stores so i think dr heavenly is is full of it um what else happened on this thing? Um, oh yeah, the um Dr. G. I think I think I believe in the the saying, keep your friends close, keep your enemies close. I think the reason why the guys were fighting so hard for Dr. G to be back on the show was not because they really wanted him around. They didn't want him spilling their secrets. Cause I'm pretty sure all of them have have been down to Magic City and done some things in some back rooms that they don't want getting out for the public. So I think that's what it is. But honestly, I do believe that that um Dr. Damon Daddy has cheated on Heavenly because I'm is this just no way. It's just no way. I think the reason why he lets her get away with murder because she lets him cheat in silence. So he so he gives and they give to make it work. Um what else is going on? Um Dr. Akima um hmm Actually, I'm going to show some grace to my fellow West African brother, but I'm just looking like I just found that I just find it very odd and dated that he just has certain, like, I guess, expectations for a match. Maybe it's just me and my forward thinking. I'm just thinking like everyone is equal, but that it works for them. I'm looking like if you like it, I love it. I'm not I'm not going to have any judgment about that whatsoever. Um, And oh, yeah, I can't wait for Apollo to be, be on our screen, too, Diva. I, uh, hmm. That's a good man, Savannah. Good. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I, I, I want to say this about relationships. Nothing is ever really equal. Right. Really? You don't think so? No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not. Dr. Kemmer is right. At some point, there has to be somebody that maybe needs to make the final decision. Right. Mm. And so, and but nothing, but what people have to understand is nothing is wrong with that. And so at any given time, maybe in one subject area that you have to go through as a couple, maybe the wife has more information and knowledge on that. And so maybe we need to go with the wife's decision in that particular area. But then there may be another area where that's the husband's expertise. Go with that in that situation, right? So, but he is right. There has to be a tiebreaker. And if you're going to let your, if you're doing traditional and you're going to let your man be, you know, the head of the household, then you know what? You go ahead and let him make that decision, right? And so really, I mean, I'm not going to get in the weeds of it all, but really at the end of the day, if you know your partner and you know how to work things, even when they think they're making the decision, it may be your decision anyway, but we all happy and all is good. <laughs> and you just got to sit back and lay back and be okay with it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so you can, you, when you really know your partner, if you really want something to sway a certain way, you can get them to sway. But um, you don't have to be all in your face, bold about it. I'm the this, I'm the that, I'm the whatever. Mm -hmm. you have to learn how to 
make things work. And that's why they try to tell you traditionally before you get married. Did y'all speak about if y'all want to have kids? Did y'all speak about how y'all going to raise those kids? The reason why they want you to have these premarital sessions is to avoid maybe conflict that can happen in the future because y'all kind of spoke about it. And now we got an idea like, oh, I, I always want the kids to go to Catholic school. And, and, and maybe my partner thinking, what the heck is wrong with public school? And we're going to save money. It's good if you kind of know that roadblock ahead right. of time, right? But, but here's the thing with that, Diva. I don't think people are truly honest when you ask those kind of questions because I think we pe they, we get caught up in like, I want the man or I want the wife. I want the ring. I want the house. I want the pictures. I want all these different things that come with being married that they're not, you're not honest about what you want in an actual family, but also in a partnership. So people can tell you whatever you want before, before you sign on the marriage certificate and, and say those vows in front of everybody until death do us part. So I, that would be, that would be ideal, but no one is ready to have an honest conversation and be like, I may not want to have kids. I may just kind of just want to just enjoy a life with you and maybe down the road that may change. I may want to adopt and, and, but no one really wants to have those dynamics because we have an idea of what marriage is supposed to be like, or family is supposed to be like, and we can't divvy off that path because of what our family says, our friends are what society says, you know? And that's why, they, that's why there's a lot of divorce. Agree. That, that, that's why this, uh, what's the name? Jane, Jane, Jenny, Mai. Mm. What's the name or divorcing now? That's future. Why that's uh no not future um what's his name his name is slipping my mind right now um but that's also why um mm -hmm. yeah, Jeezy. 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 that's also why she ended up divorcing her first husband too because of the lies right you want to sit there and you got on a whole tv show uh, your show what was it the, the talk or whatever their show not the talk what's their talk show name was the real, real. You got on you got on the real and you wasn't even being real because you sat there 10 toes down and said you didn't never want to have kids. Two seconds with Jeezy and you popping a baby out your belly. Which you really should have told your husband from the door before he spent 10 years that with you is that you didn't want to have kids with him. You made a mistake. You didn't want to marry him. But then you get with Jeezy and you think he the end all be all and then karma comes and slap you in the face and now he out. It, but I, I don't want to digress. I, I'll move forward and I'll just say that relationships is definitely a partnership. It's never 50 50. Things going to weave us. Sometimes you're 50 50. Sometimes it's teething that way. Sometimes it's teething this way. And sometimes it's all the way over here. But that's why they said through thick and thin, rich and poor, highs and lows, pretty much. Because maybe today your husband is making all the money and then he got an accident or something like that. And now it's all on you. So you're going to bail out, you're going to run away, you're going to leave? If you got that 50-50 concept or you got that concept, he's supposed to do everything. Yeah, you probably, as soon as the, the bottom falls out, you probably out. You probably like, do sis. Hey, this ain't what I signed up for. So you wasn't in it to be real in the first place. Just my opinion. I'm Manel and Poppin, you're up. Hey, everyone. Hey. Hey, hey. Hey, so... Okay. I'll be married. It's going to be 21 years. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank that, you. That's why your skin looks so good. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Um, and I think Dr. Heavenly has me by a year, right? So I get where she's coming from in regards to, okay, it's twofold. She is a business savvy woman, right? And she's with the concept of this whole social media thing, the whole socials, it's it's really moved by negativity. Really positivity doesn't, like Diva, your page is very positive. Um, you have some gossip, but the gossip is never, you know, salacious or over the top, but you're you're not the norm. Mm -hmm. So she she gets into this gossip thing because that drives in good, bad or indifferent. It's driving views to that show. Mm -hmm. That show never used to get the amount of views that it's getting now. Now, I had stopped watching Married to Medicine when uh, Buffy was on because I didn't like what was going on with Dr. Jackie in her. I, that to me 
was really some bullying type of situation. And it was totally unladylike for a person such as Jackie, Dr. Jackie. Um, but then I came back and I watched because they kind of got back on, on track. I mean, they've had highs and they've had lows. Mm -hmm. Dr. G, he, he looks very distinguished. He looks very good. He's done, he's done the work or what have you, but to be a psychologist mentally, he's, he shouldn't have never come back to the show and he shouldn't have let this young lady talk him back into coming back to the show because it wasn't for him the first time and it's not for him the second this time go around i don't feel like the men bullied him i feel like if his one if his his wife is saying no such a things and if and you stand with her then stand with her ten toes down and say if you believe it or if you don't believe it now i say all of that to say this dr heavenly and myself i'm very much more vocal than my husband people meet my meet me they're like oh my god you guys are so different my husband is very mellow but he's not he, behind closed doors he's not that person but if he doesn't know you he comes across very 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 mellow that's how dr damon comes across to me heavily is very vocal she's a comedian people don't like her just on just of how she acts but water tends to seek its own level they they have more common than they don't and people don't seem to like him based on heavenly and i don't think that's right i don't think dr damon really has cheated and if he did cheat i think it would have come out a long time ago i don't think mariah would have ever given him any grace if she had any type of proof that he cheated simply because she's come out and she's admitted that aiden has cheated we know that uh, uh, we had the situation with Dr. Jackie and her husband. Then we had Curtis, and even though he said he didn't cheat with his his female friend or what have you, so it's been infidelity throughout and out. And as much as these women do not like Heavenly, if I believe if they had to prove, it would have been proven. It would have been put on the table. So I don't think that the what he what dr damon is getting is fair because i think again people are judging him just on the fact that they don't like dr heavenly and i think dr heavenly is playing a character i don't believe that she's truly this way in real life this woman is very very smart not only is she a dentist she has several properties she has uh she of course she has she's a doctor her home is paid off. She's not like the rest of these women that's in debt for, with, with her home. They sit on acres and acres of land. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we just had to take it for what it is. You know, everybody's marriage is their own marriage. Whatever, what they put up with is not necessarily what we were put up with. Now, for some, what I don't care for with that young lady is this. Okay, she could be she can be going through uh, infertility issues at this time, and I'll even give her a pass that she never knew that she had infertile um, infertile issues prior. Even though she's a military person, and they go through uh, uh, vigorous medical background checks all the time. Okay, I'll give her that pass. But she slipped up last night, and she said, "When Andy asked her how was everything going." And she says, they've blown out my tubes. When she said they blew out my tubes, I was like, for your tubes to have been blocked, there was an infection. And there is no way, you, you're telling me, prior to Dr. G, you've never, ever, ever attempted to get in and probably maybe she never had but i'm just on the on the option of thinking i don't think in, intentionally she hasn't been intentionally tried to get pregnant before for your tubes to be blocked that means you've been you've had unprotected sex in the past you've been infected and for her to come on here and give this 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 big you this big theatrical show that she didn't know and everyone is giving her grace about about it 
I don't think that's fair either. I don't think that the women really ganged up on her because I say this, as a 52 year old woman, I feel like a lot of millennials, not all, but a lot, they don't take accountability for their actions. And that young lady, her mouth is very reckless. And I feel like she and Quad and Mariah and Toya feel like, oh, I'm on this show and we make a similar salary. I'm equal to Dr. Jackie, Dr. Simone, Dr. Heavenly. At the end of the day, I'm sorry, I'm old school. You're not equal. You could be equal to the fact, yes, I'm a woman. Um, raw, I'm all woman. I'm a feminist. All this, that, and the third. But they are doctors, and you have to give them, you have to give them the the, the kudos that they deserve because they did the work. And she wants, she wants to be able to say things recklessly, and everyone is supposed to have grace or feel satin if someone says something back to her. You have to take accountability. If you say things, if you say that woman's mother is in Hades, you have to have the repercussions. Yes, yes, Heavenly has said some very reckless things. I know this, I know this to be true, but that young lady mouth is very reckless as well. And if you don't want it, then you, you like, okay, Dr. Kimmer's wife, she doesn't bother anyone unless you bother her. As soon as Toya tried it with her, she cut her down and it ceased. It ceased. That young lady right there, she's very, she's, she, she argues like a young woman and she's called, she's very ages. She has all the jokes of calling these women olds. And the joke heavenly says what she says, because your husband is our age as well. So if we're old, he's old. You can't keep throwing out old jokes when you're married to an old man who's older than your parent. It's just like, it's a give or take. And my last thing is Dr. Kimmer. My father is Jamaican, my mother is American. What he said, he wasn't joking. He was, he was very, very coming from an honest place. And I feel like it was, it was very backwards and it shouldn't have been said. Those are, that's kitchen table talk. If that is the way he and his wife are, that's their marriage and that's fine. But you are not in Jamaica and you are not to sit here and say women are to be trained up. Again, I'll be married 21 years. We It's a give or take situation in this house too. And if my husband ever said out, out loud to anyone that he's trained me, we would have a situation. We would definitely have a situation. And I feel like, she she basically lets him it's okay to lead but you can't lead me to my demise at the same time you have to give me some type of respect where respect is earned she respects him she's never disrespected him on the camera and he's 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 very very disrespectful and he's old enough to know better he's been in this country long enough to to know better so um and Mariah and Buffy I want both of them to go and lay down. They're both two very miserable women and it's over. They're not on the show anymore. It's okay. You were wrong. Mariah, I'm sure you got a great payout. It's way above my pay grade. Buffy, you and your theatrics, I can't stand the way she speaks, the inflection in her voice, Mariah's voice, Quad's voice, the way, the way they act. I don't like any of it. Just go and be the rich women that you all say that you are and just let these people that's on this show stay on the show, show for as long as they're going to stay on the show and just everyone live their wonderful life because it's only entertainment. We all have our own real lives to deal with, but that's it. The Don, I'm coming for you, but you got to give me a minute because I'm trying to breathe. Oh, you gotta give me a minute too, cause I, I need like, to do it. Yeah, you was about to come out your seat. <laughs> well, I, listen, somebody got to call the EMT. Send on, some Diva. oxygen my way and all of the above. Let me. Back okay, I go after you. Up. Hold on one second. I need to back the train up for two point two seconds. I don't get this concept of just because someone is a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, or whatever, they deserve more respect than any other person. I'm confused with that. 
All lives matter. Check that one, y'all. All lives matter. I do not like this idea of, I'm going to look down at you. I know more than you because I'm a doctor and you are a janitor or whatever the case may be. All lives matter. Every time they want to come out their mouth, they want to talk about how they're a doctor, but then they say some reckless stuff, reckless stuff that doesn't even add up and equal up or level up to the title that they claim they have. So let me say this. I don't care who you are and how many doctors you go to. They're not going to be able to diagnose everything that's going on in your body unless you happen to say there's a reason why you need to check my back because it's this lower back pain is back here. They're not automatically going to run every test. There are people that go to the doctor and they've been to several doctors and then the third or fourth one be like, oh my God, you got cancer and it's stage three. And you're like, but how was that so? I done been to 27 doctors and nobody ever told me I was sick. So the fact that even Dr. Jackie sat on that stage and confirmed and backed Sweet Tea up and asked Simone to concur with her, she said there could be years before somebody is diagnosed with this. And to say that the only reason why your tubes is this, that, that, and the other. Yeah, she said eight years. In my opinion, because your tubes are backed up because you had some unprotected text. Well, then everybody probably on this panel and then some need to go get the tubes cleaned out. Because whether you, I, I'm not even going to continue down that road. But for Dr. Heavenly to have a house paid off. She got every business under the sun. She runs this university, that university. She don't need the money. So then why would you get on a platform? Because you a whole doctor living with a doctor. Why would you get on a platform and act a whole monkey, nut, fool, just run your mouth all recklessly if you got money in the bank like that? Why would you do that? You got cash. I don't need no negative publicity. I don't need that nonsense underneath my name for a check if I'm good. My house is paid for. I'm good. If another dime don't come this way, I am good. So you would rather go up on the screen and sit next to Carlos King and talk about the upcoming generation, which is Sweet Tea, a younger person, and the best you got, the best you got is to talk about that person for a check because you're going to get money because you're getting publicity because you're getting more likes then you know what they could shut the cameras off right now how about this cut because i'm not doing that to my fellow sister i'm not i don't need to check that back after all i'm a whole doctor and so is my husband now let me do with this i don't know if dr damon cheated or not because it ain't my man but i'm going to say this if I got to go to somebody and as a grown person, I got to sit, I don't care what nobody next to me think about me cheating or not. If my man know I'm good and we good, I don't need nobody to dap me up, confirm with me that I did or did not cheat on my mate. We good over here. All is well on this in this household. I don't need you and the other men to talk about, oh, you do you, he, he asked a simple question. I'm not even asking the question. So you think I cheated? Whatever. Whatever. It, it's not, I'm not doing all that. I'm grown. Ne this month on the 21st, Diva will be 54. I don't need nobody to confirm whether I'm cheating or not cheating on my man. If my man's good and we still together, and when I turn in the bed at night, he right there next to me, we good. It's just us, us two. We believe in each other. I don't need nobody else to confirm. So what I think she said and she did on that stage and what she does on this platform, on her IG, on her YouTube, is reckless. Proof that it is reckless is what happened with Dr. Jackie. If Dr. Jackie don't understand that that girl is reckless for business, then she's the fool, doctor degree and all. You worrying about who might have put out this video, but, but you should be worried about you came out your mouth and said it. I can't send nobody no video that you didn't say. You said it. You sat there and said that black pregnant woman, we cry too much. 
And that's why sweet tea diagnosis probably didn't happen earlier because all doctors, especially doctors that look like us, they think we cry too much. So that's how she probably was never diagnosed or misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed or whatever. You know how many people I know that the doctor told them, you got the deal with your period every month, lasting seven and eight days, heavy, you got a headache. They tell you, take some Tylenol, get ahead of it, and just deal with it. Maybe all of those people that are currently dealing with it, buying 29 pads, sticking all them pads in between their legs, because when they go to walk outside, their, 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 their ministry is so heavy, it drips everywhere, and they have to be scared, checking, carry extra pants, panties, underwear, everything with them, and maybe some doctor didn't diagnose them. Hold on one second. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. I've been taught, I've been taking my cousin to five doctors. They said she was fine. We went out of town to a different hospital. New doctor said she has stage three cancer. Pissed. Come on. Pissed. Pissed. And working in the hospital, you know how many people I've seen get misdiagnosed? And we want to mm -hmm. say that this girl was supposed to know. Or, should it, or she knew the whole time that she trying to bamboozle her husband and she should have known it's this impressive. That, that whole endometriosis conversation was deplorable on Mary to medicine. On Mary to medicine, they didn't know to have a better conversation around that particular subject when it comes to females and their health. And that is why I think Dr. Jackie stepped in. It was a quiet, she whispered it. It was a quiet whisper. She stepped in and said, okay, hold on, wait a minute. And I think that Dr. Simone can concur with me. Now we, I mean, for this is, this is in general with everybody. You cannot like somebody, but when something is wrong, call it for what it is. Call it for what it is. You don't have to like sweet tea. But to say she should have knew about her diagnosis, me as a whole nurse, I stay in the ur urgent care. I don't diagnose myself. And then when they say, oh, no, I'm like, look again, run another test, run another blood test, this and that. But I guarantee you there's about a hundred or thousands of teenagers out there right now where the OBGYN told them you got to deal with your period. That's life. And maybe after you have a baby, it'll lighten up. I know people that are in the bed two days before the thing come on. I was one of them lucky people, very light my whole life with the cycle but i got friends just it's just painful migraines headaches and the doctor told them deal with it i'm sorry to don you up well maybe people sweet tea had a doctor like dr jackie that said she was complaining too much mm -hmm. and did not get the proper care and investigation that was required in order to find her uh reasoning for um, this health issue um before it became a bigger problem than what it is now dr jackie said the quiet part out loud and a lot a lot of doctors feel that way we're just now hearing it now from a, a nationally televised doctor um who's supposed to love the black people and love her patients but you know maybe she just had one of those doctors but I, uh, can we give a raise to the comments? Because listen, I have been hollering at these comments. <laughs> y'all, y'all need a raise. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed Sweet Tea this episode. Sweet Tea said, "You all will not punk me down. I'm going to show my backbone, and I loved every minute of it." Uh, you know, she she had her rebuttals. She had everything she needed to say. And I enjoyed her this episode. Why is Phaedra here? Phaedra did not say anything the entire second episode. She leaned, grimaced, smiled, and gave us a mm-hmm a few times. She doesn't belong on the show. I'm sick of people groveling at Dr. Jackie and begging for her forgiveness. Mm -hmm. She has not done the same thing to black women. She gave a statement that was written by a publicist it wasn't from the heart even on the show 
it was 2.3 seconds of an apology. Yet you are, are still beating Quad down for an apology. And th- it wasn't even half as divisive of, of the thing that you said in your own career. You're downing the people who pay you. I'll never understand it. Uh, I want to get to the men. Uh, Eugene, you talk too much, brother. Uh-huh. You talk too much. Um, some things you just need to let pass. I agree with what Dr. Kemmel said. You know, sometimes it's a, and what you did, what you said, Diva, it's a, it's a 5149, you know, thing most of the time. And, you know, this is 2024 and there's been a whole revolution of, you know, women and liberation, but a lot of women want a man to take charge. So they don't have to think about taking charge because they're used to being in charge for any and everything all the time. So it's and it's not about you being the slave, the woman being the slave. It's just you don't have to lift a heavy hand all day, every day. So, you know, it's just, you know, got to put things into perspective. I don't think that he said it like he you thought it, you know, I think it came out his mouth wrong. And like you all said, for Dr. Um, Jackie to even have any rebuttals when your husband spends most of his time in the DR and you haven't received a receipt or anything, you know, please, Dr. Jackie, just sit there with your legs crossed. Um, Now, I do not believe that Dr. Damon has a baby. Maybe he's cheated because Dr. Heavenly herself said that she'll never leave if he has cheated. And Mariah is now out saying that, you know, she has all these receipts and she still has them. But if we refer back to um, season six, episode seven, 17, uh, reunion part two at the six minute mark, Mariah stated that the only reason she said that is because Heavily was stating that um, Heavily kept saying, your mama, your mama, your mama. So she said that in retaliation and she apologized. So why now, six years later, come back and say, I have these receipts and what you said on the reunion and apologize and said that you lied. That you had receipts. What, what is it, Mariah? What is it? It's been all this time, either put up or shut up. I'm sick of hearing about it. You you got your resurgence from Carlos King. Now you're doing the same thing Heavily is doing with Buffy. I'm over it. Um, And she did uh, say that, Mariah did say that Aiden had cheated on her um, season five, episode 12, when they were on vacation. She, she told Jackie that she has gone through the same thing that she's gone through now. So she did say that on the show. Um, I, I I wish the men had got a little more uh, a piece of this because I think they were uh, a bigger piece of this season. Um, and Dr. Kimmel has risen to the top of of everybody on this show. You know, they didn't give his wife anything, but they seemed to give him more camera time and, you know, things to say than his wife. And she's supposed to be the centerpiece, not him. That lets you know that the men are a vital piece of the show. Um, and that that's it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I can't wait for, to hear what uh, Apollo has to say. I think he's going to drag the hell out of Phaedra uh-huh. when he first sit down. But I think there's going to be some unison between the two of them when it comes to the kids at the end. Um, yeah. And I think that's why she brought him on the show. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Y'all keep on comments. I'm enjoying myself. Uh, and I will say this. Somebody, somebody said in the chat, and you're absolutely right, or else they tell you to put your young, young, young child on birth control. Again, pumping the prescription, the blue script, and that's a whole other conversation for another day. They tell you to put your child on birth control because it's going to help regulate their period. Now we, you know, we we could talk here, but if you want to talk, buckle your seatbelt and be prepared for the heat and the smoke. Be prepared for it. 
Emmanuel Yaw. Okay, I have a lot to say. So mm -hmm. the apology tour that Quad gave in the beginning, I thought it was pathetic. That's why I told y'all last week that I personally wasn't mad about what Simone had said because everybody was more mad than Quad was because here is Quad begging her to forgive her and for them to be friends again. Mm -hmm. Quad wants that money. I think this season she realized, oh, shoot, they kicked me out the trip. They can truly get rid of me if they want. So let me do my thing. And she did. I think the way that they treated Sweet Tea, it has been the way they've treated her has been disgusting and deplorable. I find it funny that they talk about Sweet Tea's look, but have they not seen what they were wearing when they began this show? I mean, are they serious? I was proud of Sweet Tea. She asked Quad, why even say anything about me on social media? Move on. And she's right. Look, we're not dumb, okay? We understand that at the end of the day, this is Quad's ex-husband's new wife, so you expect there to be a little shade, maybe a little dig, but what Quad and Heavenly did is they took it too far. They took it personal. They attacked Sweet Tea in a very personal level. That's why my, my heart broke for her. Heavenly, and she even said, well, I have a daughter, so I wanted to look after her. I was like, well, if you have a daughter, do you want someone to treat her and speak to her the way you talk to Sweet Tea? It's horrible. Quad... I think she is coming across a little bitter and desperate. She said, I can talk about my relationship with him. I was like, okay, so now all of a sudden you want to talk about it? That's, That's weird. That's right? That. Like, really? I think it was also sickening to see these women who call themselves doctors handle the conversation about endometriosis the way that they did. Heavenly saying that she would have found out sooner. I think that was a really dangerous statement to make because how the hell is a woman supposed to know if she has fibroids, fibroids or endometriosis? You know what that's called? That's called victim blaming. And I don't give Jackie any credit for jumping in. I think the only reason she jumped in was so she could look good, you know, giving us a little fact, um, but not because she cared for Sweet Tea at all. I thought Damon asking Greg if he thought he was a cheater was the most ridiculous and stupidest thing. How is Greg supposed to know that? What he, he was he was coming across very defensive and very angry. I believe Mariah. I also want to ask everyone some real quick because somebody just made a comment about Sweetie has a reckless mouth. So, you guys, think about it. If Sweetie had gone on Twitter and called Damon the P word that heavenly called Greg, what do y'all think would have happened? Mm -mm. I don't care who's the doctor or who's older. It, they've, they've gone too far. And then lastly, I 100% agree with what Diva said. No one needs to get mad at Kimma's point of view. A lot of people follow that. I was offended personally when Andy asked that question that read, you're in America, get over it. I thought that sounded extremely xenophobic because just because he came to America, he needs to forget about his beliefs. That was really problematic for me. You know, what works for them works for them. And then last thing, Jacqueline was pissing me off when she was sitting in that dressing room talking about Kemma being ignorant. Mm. Ign you were the last person to talk about ignorance, my love. Your dangerous, reckless, idiotic, foolish comments were swept under the rug. Y'all talked about it for two minutes and then you pointed it at Quad. Get out of here with that. This was, it was crazy. I couldn't believe I was watching this. You know what, Emmanuel? You brought up a very good point. Forget my values. Forget how I was raised. Throw them in the trash because I'm in America. Really, though? Really, though? See, see... The very things that the people are fighting about are the very things we do. They just go under, maybe they're not named or they're going under a different name. I don't care what household you go in. Somebody's making the final decision if, if two of you are not agreeing. Somebody's making the final decision. I, I mean, let's, let's be clear here. It's so stupid. And, and let's also be clear. He said, well, I had to do X, Y, Z because uh, 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 Dr. Alicia, where's the $150,000? He don't want to sit there and have to work 200 hours extra like Dr. Eugene did to pay back taxes and everything else. Right. Hopping from house to house like nomads. That part. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't Diva, say- I know in my in my household, whenever we ask my mom something, the first thing she say, what's your daddy say? That part. He had the final say so. That part. You're not gonna try to under you know go behind his back. <laughs> As, as we often did. <laughs> we all did, right? Everybody did, yeah. But that said, what, you, what your daddy say? And that's respect that's right. for your mate and your household. So there won't be no disaccord in the household. So remove the word training, like he said. Let's stop it. Stop the nonsense. Yeah, I know Alicia hit that money. That's our thought process. Oh, Smoke, I came to you already? Yeah, 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 you did. Okay, Katrina, you up. And before you go, Katrina, let me just show one of the uh, older pictures. Everybody evolves after their first season on the show. And they don't look bad there, actually. They look pretty good. No, no, Diva, they they look bad, Diva. No, it doesn't look bad. (laughs) They they look like high-end escorts. (laughs) <laughs> but the show, but the but the, the point is though everybody evolves after their first season. So it's like, why are you on sweet tea? I mean, still horrible, diva. But they the makeup looks great and the hair looks all right. It's, it's, it's not the worst, but not th- again, but mm-hmm. again, it's no better than what sweet tea might have did season one, her first season. Wait, go back, Diva. Was that heavenly? And that wait, go back, go back. That one was that season two or season three? I don't know. Ooh, well, no, heavenly. Uh uh-uh. uh. You know, what's, interesting, you know what's, interesting, what's interesting is you're sitting there, you're talking about this girl, but yet they allegedly didn't want her on the show initially because of her looks. So why would you do that to somebody else? You sat there and told us you don't got liposuction, this, that, 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 and the other. All the fit in on the show, but you want to throw your title around. You a doctor. You paid off your house. So why would you change your whole everything about you just to be on this show? If the degree is the end all be all, why are you here? Katrina, you're up. Hey, good afternoon. I mean, good evening, y'all. Um, I'm gonna share something real quick, but I'm gonna get to my review too. But um, I was in the military, I was in the army, and you do your physicals and whatsoever, but they don't go into in depth unless you tell them that problem. Okay, fast forward after the military. I had very, very painful menstrual problems. Went to the doctor. They told me, fibroids, fibroid comes and goes. But I'm still in the bed bawling into a knot. I'm taking the pain medicine they're giving me, which I don't like doing. So I'm alternating pain medicine with my uh, with other medicine, with other, like, over-the-counter medicine. Come to find out. I had so many fibroids and endometriosis that I had so many fibroids it was hanging on my ovaries like a thing of grapes. After going through doctors, went to this doctor, he told me that uh, there was nothing wrong. He was my black doctor, lived my last child. Told me there's nothing wrong. Your uterus the same size as it was when you had your uh, last child. Because I had told him that my other doctor said I needed a hysterectomy. I was only 30. So no, I did not want a hysterectomy at that point in time. So end up, I went to this doctor, back to my black doctor, and he told me, uh, you're fine. Gave me some medicine that you find in these old time drugstores that don't even exist anymore. But anyway, I pull up in my driveway, couldn't get out of my car. Called my white doctor back. He said, if you hurt that bad, you need to go to the emergency room. The next day I was in, I had to have emergency hysterectomy and an ecmodectomy because I had a stone in my appendix, was getting ready to burst. Plus the fibroids had busted and was free blood in my uterus. So I had to have the full thing done. So by her saying that, that really touched me because it got to me because I was in the military. Military don't do all that checking. Okay, anyway, enough of that. So I wanna start crying here. Okay, um, with, like I said, with the thing with sweet tea and all that, they talking about her endometriosis. That was pitiful. Because you don't, you get diagnosed with endometriosis, but you can still go a long time before it really, really caused you a lot of problems. Because that's what I did. Um, with Jackie, they keep skating by everything that she's doing. 
They're not holding her to the, they're not holding her comfortable for anything. She's getting away with it. Um, with Simone and Quad making up, you could have did that a long time ago. Y'all wait to the reunion whatsoever, then you play on that, then you do that so you can come back the next season. Dr. Heavenly is a liar. I already told you why she's a liar. Um, you coming for this young girl. What you think that a, has daddy messed with a young woman or something? Why are you so pressed with sweet tea? You press with her, you press with her for a reason, something that happened. And you saying that you drink infamy, daddy, he has to drink infamil with uh, water because he drink can't drink milk. But infamil is a protein cow based milk with proteins from cows with the milk protein in it. So if you can't drink milk, how are you drinking infamil? That's not making any sense. Then um, with the man in the, in the, in the room with um, uh -uh, Damien and all that, um, the thing with that is, I honestly believe Mariah got some, had those paperwork. And at one point in time, you know, Mariah and Quad and Dr. G was very, very close. He probably knew. He probably seen the evidence. So that's why he was trying to ask Dr. G, do you think I'm cheating whatsoever? Like trying to punk him and ask him, like, do you think I'm cheating? Do you think I'm cheating? Because Mariah probably did have the evidence. Because remember, uh, uh, what's her name? Aiden was in the back saying, we got the proof right here. We got the proof right here. And she said, I didn't do it because I didn't want to destroy Dr. Damien. Uh, Dr. Damien think because she cared for Dr. Damien. Mariah loved Dr. Damien. Just her and Heavenly just didn't get along. And um, what else? Uh, Toya, Toya going to do what she's going to do. She's going to spend the money. She's going to move to a different house. She'll build another house, stay in there for a week, leave that, go on about her business. Uh, with the, uh, Dr. Karen, what is, what's his name? Uh, what you call her husband? This man is from Africa. They have a lot of different uh, traditions than what we have over here. And they live by them. Just because he left from over in Africa, it doesn't mean that he has to leave everything that he done in Africa. He's in the United States, and he can bring that with him. Just because I leave home don't mean I can't bring a sandwich, because I brought that sandwich from my house. Um, let's see. That's basically it, because the rest of it, it, it was just a blur. And Apollo coming, okay, we'll see next week, he, next week what he got to say. We all know that Phaedra knew that Apollo had that money. That's how the house got built. That's how she got those expensive uh, clothes and whatsoever. And I don't blame Sweet Tea. I wouldn't be wasting my money on labels. Why are you making somebody else rich? You can put that money into your bank account and buy what you want later on. If you want to buy that, you can't tell me what to wear. As long as I look presentable, I'm good and done. So that's how I see it. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate you. Sorry you had to go through that, but so many um, women do. Right. So many women really do. And so, listen, next week is part three. I hope y'all come back and be here for part three. I'm going to watch it because I, I can't wait to see what Apollo um, had to say. But I just think if they're going to have medical conversations on the show, they need to get it together. They need to figure it out because they're still representing their profession and the world is watching when they sit there and talk. When you talk about the tradition of marriage, I'm not trying to be funny, but let me say this. When it comes to Dr. Jackie, maybe you should revisit and look at some traditions because here it is. That man told you to stop working your job so much because he wanted to see you, but now he's over in the DR. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. He told you he doesn't see you enough. You always got the phone in your hand, but then he goes out of Atlanta to do business. At least you was coming home every night and he was seeing you and you was charting. He could have still rolled over on you and y'all could have did what y'all do, but you going to do that while he's in the DR? They too smart for their own good. They know everything, everything everybody else say is wrong and reckless, but when they say it, it's all good. Respect is earned, whether you the janitor, you work at Target, Walmart, or you have your doctorate degree or a doctor degree. Respect is earned. And don't let anybody tell you anything different. All lives matter. 
whether you have a two-year degree, a four-year degree, or no degree, whether you're self-educated, all lives matter. If you grew up in a tradition and you meet your wife and that's y'all want to carry on that to tradition, that is your business. So the best thing I learned about relationships is keep it between you and your mate. Because once you start telling other people they want to chime in, weigh in, it ain't nobody's business what y'all two do. If y'all like it, that's all that matters. But Diva, with that, they shouldn't be on a reality TV show for the world to see and to pick and prod at their said relationship in their dynamics as well. I don't agree with that. Mm. They're on a reality show and they're saying, I'm telling everybody generically for mm. their own personal relationships. But you on a reality show and you say that this is what y'all doing is working for y'all, then fine. Because you want to sit there, Dr. Jack, and you want to cry because your husband cheated and now you can't go to... Uh, 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 the DR, wherever, uh, wherever Hilton Head. You, you can't go to Hilton Head because your man cheated over there. But you worrying about you saying my words is reckless because the man said he trained me up. Well, he never cheated. So now did I chump you, Doctor Jackie? Can you shut up now? I couldn't be on that show. They would shut the TV down. Can I trump you now? Because it don't make no sense. Your man cheated. You crying on the TV. You can't go to Hilton Head. But my man said he trained me and now it's a big deal. I'm going to need you to go fix your household before you come start trying to teach me how to fix mine. And that's a point blank in the period. Dr. Heavenly, you are so happy at home. She's so happy at home. Daddy and her get along so well, but yet she's so mean, so nasty to everybody around her. Does that spill out happiness to you? Usually, when people are happy, that thing trickles throughout their entire life. When people are miserable, that thing trickles throughout their entire life. I don't see how you so happy in this household, but you could come and just be so reckless with your mouth to a girl that you asked to be on the show. Doesn't make sense to me, but hey, that's me. Doesn't make sense. Every time you turn around, Curtis is in the DR. He show up for group checks when he hanging with the man. And not for nothing, I don't see, when I see Dr. Jackie and Curtis interact, I don't see anything loving. I do not see it being that loving. Didn't Dr. Jackie give him like a fist pound or like a tap when she saw him at the reunion? Not even a hug or a kiss. It's kind of no, like, oh, she, hey. just, she just walked oh, away him. Yeah, she wait. just walked. Yeah, and she kind of saw at him. Yeah, mm. they have they have understanding. There mm -hmm. you go. There you go. So don't worry about whether my husband trained me or not. Come on now. So, because it it's a business transaction. Yeah, she don't want to pay because if they break up, she got to pay. She got to say, and, and let me say you just in my opinion, what Doctor Jackie is mad about. Dr. Jackie wanted more from her relationship. Curtis said no, 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 and no to everything she wanted. And here they are today. But he got everything he wanted. But there you go. Boom. We're connecting now, Smoke. Mm. He told her no, 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 and no. Why? Because he already had a child. So everything she wanted was a no. A no, a no, and you need to come home and you need to be here. And I'm I I you knew I was a doctor when you married me. I got a chart. And if you can't get on board with that, then we we not the right people for each other. Don't keep telling us you a doctor, Dr. Jackie. Tell the husband, the man you married, the man you said I do with. I think Jackie and Curtis are like a, a hard story of like, this is what happens when you stay and you think you can change the person or their mind about certain things. If they don't, and what you say, don't let someone tell you no twice or, or to or put true someone over you twice. If the man said he didn't want to have kids and that's something that was really important to you, you should have been, it had enough confidence in yourself. Oh, I'm nice. a doctor. I'm beautiful. I will find somebody who will match me where I'm at. And I think, I think that's a lot of where her resentment is, where she felt like, well, I can put all my all in the work because the thing that I wanted to, that would have brought us closer together, 
you said absolutely not. So the thing, the thing that would have made us closer as a family, you told me no. So what do you expect me to do? And I had cancer twice, and I had to beat it twice. What that, do, What do you expect me to do? <laughs> that part, that part. You know what you said it right there. She got Dr. Jackie has so much of a story to tell. Do you know how many people are diagnosed with breast cancer per day? And it's scary to them. And she survived it twice. And you're up on this show with the foolery. When you got a better story to tell. When Dr. Jackie, I love that first. Because she came up there saying, stop eating the junk food. Throw this out. Exercise. Drink your water. And now she's saying, take a shot. God darn, the money, the money, the money. She would have never when she first started. If you go back and watch when Dr. Jackie first came on that screen, she was always in tip top shape. Always. And she went to, I want to say it was Dr. Henley House. I, I want to say she kind of went to all their house and she was throwing out the junk food. And now you did a whole 360. We giving shots. We no squats, shots uh, over squats. And exercising and eating right and changing your mindset. But then every time you turn around, I'm a doctor. Well, girl, we heard you. We heard you. But what does it mean? We heard you. You a dentist, Dr. Heavenly. Let's see you go do some makeovers on some people that really need it. But instead, you rather sit there, tear down a girl, and tell people to sign up for Dr. Heavenly Academy. No, I'll pass. I sleep in my one bedroom condo with my integrity and eat my food before I sign up for some academy that's going to have me slaying people down one by one and tearing down people's uh, 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 reputations and everything else. I pass. But listen, guys, I got worked up tonight. Give me this darn show. I can't wait till part three comes so I can be done with it. Yes, it you did get worked up, girl. Listen, listen, because we're not going to do the foolery. We're not going to do the foolery that somebody, some non-medical professional should know this, should have known their diagnosis and was hiding it from their husband. Now, that, that, that we're doing too much now. You don't have to like her, but we're doing too much with that. But anyway, guys, I thank y'all for being here. If you didn't hit the like button coming in, Hit the like button going now, okay? I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow night for trending topics. There's a lot of smoke on the streets. And we're going to see what we're going to talk about, all right? So I want to thank y'all for being here. Don't forget, hit the like button. I'll see y'all next time. Good night, good, not, but I, good, good night and goodbye, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.